Hello and welcome to GCSE English and this particular topic is called Poetic Techniques. So you need to be able to identify and analyze the effects of a range of poetic techniques in an exam. And some of these or most of these techniques are within this particular task that we're about to do now. So we have what we call transferable skills. So a lot of poetic techniques also appear in both fiction and nonfiction and drama. And they're just ways of describing things. So use your wider knowledge of literature and creative writing as a foundation for this particular task that you're going to do. Imagery. Poets use a range of techniques to build up pictures for the reader. Imaginable pictures by just reading. These pictures contain the meaning of the poem and show us what the speaker is thinking or feeling. And this is called imagery. Images, on the other hand, any time a poet has used nouns, adjectives, verbs, or adverbs to create a picture in the reader's head, they're creating a certain image. And identify the images being created by a poet, and you can discuss the effects of these particular images as well. Recurring imagery. Um, consider whether any of the images in a poem have a similar theme, such as nature, could be darkness, could be adventure, could be romance. This is called a recurring image and is used to make it clear what the poet is asking us to think about in terms of the recurring image or theme. A simile, uh, these are comparisons using the words like and as. Poets use similes to link a complex or unusual idea to something that we are familiar with. They help us to understand what the poet is trying to convey. Example, the pain of his loss felt like a deep hole inside her stomach. So the pain is being compared to the deep hole in the stomach. And we have those two key words in the similes, like and as, so look up those. Metaphors uh, are also comparisons, but whereas a simile uses like or as, metaphors are written as if they are true. Often poets use them to make an idea more interesting or to make us see a familiar thing in an unusual way. So for example, a deep hole opened inside her stomach. Okay, so um, a simile will have like and as, whereas uh, metaphors are written as they, if they are true. Extended metaphor is something also that's very useful. Sometimes a metaphor can run through an entire poem, for example. If a poet you, was using the times of a day as a metaphor for the stages of a love affair, when a poet does this, and it is the same comparison being used to explore different ideas, it's called an extended metaphor. Keep that in mind as well. That will really impress the examiner if you were to see this and use this in the exam. Personification. It's a type of metaphor, but it's specifically when an object or an idea um, is written about in a human form or human quality. Uh, for example, like referring to the branches and twigs of a tree as arms and fingers. Um, and it could have uh, emotional and behavioral attributes as well at the same time. So uh, we've got some other things that you should look out for. So poets often use different sounds in order to make important words, phrases, or images stand out. Do not think of them as conveying meaning, more emphasizing it. So for example, <clears throat> the other poetic techniques that you can look at, which come under the category of sounds are rhyme. When two words usually sound the same, usually at the end of a line. Uh, an internal rhyme, when two words are rhymed within the poem for certain effect, Alliteration, when a series of words are given the same opening sound. Sibilance is when a series of words start with or contain S sound, like S sounds. That's called a sibilance. Plosives are particularly hard sounds at the start of within words, such as C, K, T, P, B, and D. Uh, keep them in mind as well. Onomatopoeia, words that actually sound like the sound that they describe, such as bang, crackle, pop, and so on and so on. Remember these poetic techniques also appear in other forms of writing, so analyze them whenever you see them. So it's not only used for just poetic techniques, but you can also use them for your English language or literature as well. Imagery is used to convey the poet's ideas in an interesting way that creates a picture in the reader's head. Different sounds are used to emphasize keywords, phrases, and images. You've got some follow-up questions uh, based on this particular task. Have a read of this again. And if you do need to write these uh, poetic techniques down as part of your revision, then please do so. Otherwise, um, this uh, task is available for you to refer to anytime you want. Good luck with this. We'll follow up all the questions in our follow-up class.
Thank you.